Okay, here is part two of the video series, just kind of walking you through everything that we've gotten up to this point. So this one's gonna be about polytomics and stock system. Okay, so to start us off, we have magnesium, and you can see that we have NO3. So magnesium, we can refer to our main group element charges, and so you can see that magnesium is right here. He has a plus two charge, meaning two valence electrons, um, he just has to get rid of those two in order to become, um, get them off the screen, become neon, okay? Um, or it has an electron configuration as neon. So what we do with that is we're gonna go ahead and write down its charge up here. So we have our plus two up here. NO3, so NO3, we can find that information on the inside of your periodic table. If you open it up, you have a nice pretty list like this. So what you would do is you would look down this list and find NO3. So NO3, as you can see, is right here. So that's nitrate, okay, nitrate. And if we look at that, okay, you can kind of see this little negative symbol up here and the three that's down here, okay. What that means is that this is nitrate, NO3 is nitrate with a minus one charge. So now that you have your charges, all we're gonna do again is crisscross or cross and drop. We have MG, we don't write the ones, and then we're gonna put NO3 in parentheses and bring that two to the outside. You don't simplify or anything, that's all we've got. And the way you name this is we would name the first one magnesium, and then you would just use the name that's given to you for the polyatomic, which would be nitrate. So these do not end in ides. Okay, so that's our first example. Another example could be something like, let's do magnesium again. But let's mix them with sulfite. So you can kind of find sulfite, that is SO3. And you notice that sulfite has a minus two charge. So magnesium again has the plus two. We have a minus two over here. When we crisscross, we end up with Mg2, and we have our SO3 with a two on the outside. Well, just like earlier, we can't leave these. We have to reduce to the simplest ratio, so we would now bring those to be ones, so your final answer would be Mg SO3, and I've kind of told you guys you should put them in parentheses so that you know that it is something that you don't mess with anything inside those parentheses, okay? All right, um, finally, one more example. Uh, we're gonna use, let's use phosphate. So we're gonna go ahead and say um, for phosphate, let me give myself some room here, okay? So for phosphate, I'm gonna go ahead and put that one with some sodium. So I have sodium and then phosphate, you can kind of see on your list is PO3, I'm sorry, PO4 with a minus three charge. Sodium is found in group one, okay? So sodium is found in group one, so he has a plus one charge. So we're gonna go ahead and indicate that on here. And we take that information, crisscross our charges again, and we end up with Na3PO4. Now typically you wouldn't have to write the parentheses, but because we are just learning, I do recommend you do this so that you know that you cannot touch anything inside the parentheses, only stuff on the outside. Okay, so that right there is sodium, sodium phosphate. Okay, so that's the basics on uh, polyatomics. So now I'm gonna move into stock system. For stock system, we would have, uh, let's for example, let's talk about FeO, FeO versus Fe2O3, okay? So for stock system, we notice that our stock system is talking about transition metals. Okay, 
Your transition metals are found in the center of your periodic table. So I'm going to pull up a periodic table real quick. My periodic table. Okay, and so as you can see, iron is found right here. So iron is in the middle. He's part of our transition metal. So once we've noticed that we have a transition metal, we now have to put our focus on our anion. And we have to use our anion um, and its charge to figure out what we've got, um, what charge is going to be given on our iron. So we have oxygen. Oxygen is found in group right here. It's group 16, so that means it's one, two away. So he has a minus two charge, okay? So we're gonna put that information down, minus two. Okay, I look to see how many I have. I only have one oxygen. So negative two times one tells me that I have an overall negative two charge for this thing. Well, what we've always been doing is you want to balance this out. They bond so they have that full, stable outer shell. So we can kind of say that their charges actually cancel each other out to be zero. So in order to make this be a true statement, that would mean that we'd have to have a positive two charge here. Well, we always want to double check how many irons we have. So here we only have one iron. So that means we have a positive two charge on that iron. So this is iron two oxide. So if you notice, we use Roman numerals. Okay, back in the day, we would have had to call it ferrous oxide, but you guys don't have to worry about that. You just write your Roman numeral that's going to tell you what the charge is. So let's look at the other one, iron 2 and then O3. So here, again, we're going to look at our oxygen. He has a negative 2 charge. Negative 2 times this 3 or negative two times three oxygens total is a negative six. In order to balance it out to equal zero, this has to be a plus six, but we have to respect the fact that there's two irons that that gets distributed between. So we're gonna divide it by two to get us a plus three charge overall. So this is actually iron three oxide. Okay, <clears throat> um, with the basic stock system, we will do CR3 and 4. Okay, so looking here, again, we notice chromium is part of those transition metals. So we're going to look at our nitrogen. Nitrogen has a negative 3 charge being in group 15. Negative 3 times this 4 gives me an overall of a negative 12. We want to balance out, so we have something minus 12 equals 0, so that would have to be a positive 12. I have three things that it has to get distributed between, so I'm going to divide by 3, tell me that it is a positive 4 each. So this would be chromium 4 nitride.